One of the ways that it helps us to master the nomenclature of systems engineering is to work example problems. And as usual, we're going to pick our example problems from Civil and Environmental Systems Engineering by Ravel, Whitlatch, and Wright. In particular, we have these problems at the end of the first chapter that ask us to identify decision variables, parameters, the objective function in words, and the constraints in words. So I'm going to pick a problem from Ravel, Whitlatch, and Wright and show an example of how we can define these four things without making a mathematical model, just describing what they mean in this example. And our example is going to be number five, the materials. So bear with me while I organize our approach to this problem. The problem asks us to identify decision variables. Those are the variables over which the engineer has discretion. They're sometimes called the independent variables of the problem. The problem also asks for parameters, and I haven't recorded a video that talks about the parameters yet. There is the objective function by which the merit of one design or the value of one design will be compared to all others. The objective function is typically maximized or minimized to find the one best combination of design variables that gives us the most of whatever we want. For example, profit or in the case of maximization or cost in the case of minimization. And lastly, the problem asks for constraints in words. You might remember that constraints are expressed as equations, either equalities or inequalities or balance equations. So that brings us back to what are parameters? Well, the constraints and the objective function are always expressed in terms of the design variables. The objective function, let's say z, will be a function of all the design variables, and as will the constraint equations. The constraint equations will always be expressed in terms of whatever these design variables are going to be. But the parameters are not. Parameters can be equations, but they're not necessarily expressed in, in the form of design variables. So what are parameters? Parameters are those things that are outside the engineer's control and neither a function of the design variables. Those could be prices, market prices. They can change, they can be volatile, but in this case, a market price is a parameter. But they could also be physical constants, the acceleration of gravity is a parameter, and for our purposes in civil engineering, we treat it as a constant on Earth, but on Mars or on the Moon, of course, it would be different. And these are parameters that are outside our control, but nevertheless govern the relationship between the design variables and the objective function, or the design variables and the constraints. Parameters are outside our control. They're the aspects of the problem that we just have to accept as true. So let's go back to our problem on materials. Here we have a contractor that can sell several classes of concrete. Let's call those classes C1, C2, C3. These are the classes of Portland cement concrete that a contractor can sell. And presumably each one of these has a demand in the marketplace. The recipe for concrete is made up of sand, uh, could be fine or coarse aggregate, gravel, so these two things together are taken as aggregate, the sand being the fine and the gravel being the, or crushed stone, being the um, coarse aggregate. Then there's of course Portland cement and water. We'll call these the design variables. These are the proportions that we control. How much is aggregate, how much is cement, and how much is water? Now you can imagine the cost of each one of these ingredients, and we'll call those cost one, cost two, cost three. These are examples of parameters. 
C1, C2, C3 are different combinations of sand, cement, and water. One of them might be, say, 3,000 PSI, 4,000 PSI, 28-day compressive strength, 5,000 PSI for a 28-day compressive strength. All of these will be expressed in terms of volumes, or volume per month, volume per week, volume per year. And these will be market parameters such that the amount produced, or subject to market parameters, such as the amount produced um, must meet or be less than the market demand. He's not going to produce that which cannot be sold. It'll just result in a cost for washing out the trucks and wasting the extra produced concrete. So not only are these design variables, x1, x2, and x3, for the any combination of the first mix but they have to be subject to the constraint of meeting the mar market demand how would we model that well to create enough of the x1 x2 x3 for any particular mix design we'll call it c1 we combine the tons so there must be less than or equal to C1 for this demand. And what that means is we have two dimensions of these design variables. This is going to be X for mix one, one, X for mix one, two, X for mix. Keep in mind, for mix one, this is the amount of aggregate, amount of cement, and amount of water that goes into meeting the market demand, which we don't control. That's the market demand parameter for this particular mix of concrete. That means we must have also X2, 1, plus X2, 2, plus X2, 3. The sand, cement, and water for this mid-range concrete, X3, 1, plus X3, 2, plus X3, 3. And these tons must be less than or equal to the amount of concrete can be sold in any given period, like a week or a month. It's very common to have a number of design variables like this that are expressed in a table or a two by two matrix. So far, this is a linear problem because all of these equations that describe the constraints, and these are all constraint equations, inequalities, as well as balance, these equations are all linear. Well, what other sorts of constraints or um, parameters are uh, subject to the, or, or br are brought to bear on the problem? We've identified our decision variables, and it turns out that as we've organized this problem, there are nine. We're beginning to identify some parameters. Those are the market parameters. What's the maximum number of volume or amount of volume that can be sold and the prices that the market gives us. We haven't yet done the objective function. So what shall the objective function be? One way to think about this is that all the mixed designs we might presume are profitable and so the contractor wants to sell the most of each one of these materials. We could say, for example, max Z, which is total volume of concrete sold or manufactured. And what would that look like? Well, max Z in this case would be the sum of all of the X's. We want to maximize the combination of sand, cement, and water that uh, the market will allow or that the market will purchase. So we've described in general the objective function. We've identified the design variables. We've described some of the parameters that govern the problem. What we haven't done is talked about the cost of each one of these ingredients. And the problem doesn't really ask us to do it, although we could. We know that water is cheaper than cement and cheaper than sand and gravel. And so the contractor has an incentive to use as much water to fill the volume 
as the contractor can get away with to meet the specifications of the market at C1. Let's check the problem again. The material specification for each class of concrete allows the percentage by weight of cement, sand, and gravel to range between upper and lower bounds. So what are we saying? For example, X11 over X11 plus X12 plus X13 is the percentage of sand in mixed design one. And it must be less than or equal to whatever the sand, maximum sand percentage is, and whatever the minimum sand percentage is for mixed design one. The constraints for mixed design two and mixed design three would look exactly the same as this, but we would replace the indices for those mixed designs. And for example, for cement, we would change the index for the material that we use, and we would write constraint equations that represent these mixed design constraints. This says nothing really about what the optimal mixed design is. It just identifies the feasible region of these mixed designs. Again, our, um, our sort of draft objective statement is to maximize the total volume. Now, this might not be sensitive enough to the parameters. We haven't talked about what they can charge. So you can imagine a more refined objective function. It's not just to maximize total volume sold, but to maximize the profit that we make off of the first mixed design plus the profit that we make off the second mixed design plus the profit that we make off the third mixed design. In each case, I'm uh, establishing profit per ton in this case. If Z is expressed in terms of profit, taking these price parameters, then it's a little bit different than just total volume. Now, the contractor might mix, might change what they want to manufacture based upon whether one mix design is going to be more profitable than the others. Now we have a more complete and better description of the problem. We've identified the design variables. We've identified the parameters. We've identified an objective function and we've identified the operative constraints both based upon the mix design and based upon the amount the demand for different mix designs in the marketplace that satisfies the conditions of the problem and teaches us what the word parameter means